Hi, this is Marlene, and today we're going to do a meditation about disenfranchised grief. But for the first minute or two, let's talk about disenfranchised grief and what that means and how difficult a process that is now that you're grieving. And what disenfranchised grief means is that your grief is unsupported that those people who you have in your life, your family and friends, extended family and friends, co-workers, the people that are around you are either not being supportive of your grief, don't know how to be supportive of you while you grieve, are not helpful, or are shaming and judging you due to the nature of how your loved one may have passed. And this is a really difficult process and can be traumatic to go through. And you may feel like you are going through it alone. And it can be a very eye-opening state to be in when you realize that you are not going to receive the support that you need most right now from the people that are around you when you need it most. And that can be very disheartening, very sad. And now that you're vulnerable, that you're grieving and you're intensely sad and you're experiencing overwhelming loss, that you need compassion and comfort and patience and kindness and acceptance while you go through this, but you're not getting it. And that is not good for society. Now we can help you to get through this. Now I know about this. I have gone through this myself and I do know that people can say really hurtful things. And I don't mean by accident, They might not say the right thing or they might accidentally say something insensitive. That's not what I'm talking about because everyone's going to do that. Grief is a tough thing and not everybody knows what to say exactly. As you may have already experienced. That's just general awkwardness. And we can, although it's not helpful, we can let that go. But what I'm talking about is when someone deliberately says something mean, accusatory, or shaming or blaming towards you about you, about your family, or about your loved one due to the events or the nature of their passing. They may have suffered from an addiction. They may have taken their life due to suicide. There may have been an accident There can be any number of reasons why somebody may have passed. And I understand what it's like to lose someone due to addiction or overdose. And people sometimes might not get behind you around that. They might not understand it or they might be judgy or they might be shaming. And shame is the last thing that you need to experience right now. So even without a meditation, I'm going to tell you point blank that if there's anyone in your life right now who is shaming you or blaming you or saying insensitive, unkind things, unless maybe they went through the loss themselves and they're completely traumatized by it and they're just venting, if in that event, if that hurts you, they might need a support person of their own. You can ask them to not vent to you that you're trying to grieve, that you don't want to say bad things about the person who passed, and you can ask them to stop. You can ask them to stop nicely the first time, and if they don't, you may need to stop communicating with them altogether. Or you may need to complain to someone about someone else and have someone else act on your behalf and ask this person to stop saying unkind, 
insensitive, and basically cruel things to you about the person that you lost. Because that's absolutely not necessary. It's totally unacceptable. And in my opinion, it's an absolute abomination. Because grief is such a sensitive process and it takes so much time and so much energy to go through that the last thing the person who's going through grief needs is someone being insensitive and unkind and judgy. And I just wanted to validate you about that. Please don't take on any of that shame or judgment. And if you're alone in grief, in the meditation, we're going to walk through how to reach out. So I've talked now for six minutes and I've tried to validate you and I may in fact have brought stuff up that have made you feel a little worse about the situation that you might be in. But now we're going to speak comforts. You're going to just simply self comfort, get yourself in a really comfortable position. If you're feeling strong and relatively awake and you want to sit or if you'd like to lie down in your favorite spot all nestled up in your bed or your couch and just really self-soothe and just get into yourself because this is who you have right now you have yourself and this is the time in your life that you're going to learn how to really self-nurture because now self-nurturing is not a privilege for you it's become a survival skill so with that take a deep breath and an exhale and you have total permission from the universe to focus in on yourself right now and completely self-nurture to absolutely take care of yourself to focus in on yourself and your own healing take a few more deep breaths because breath is the bridge between the mind and the spirit and it's how we go from a state of fully awake consciousness to a state where our subconscious mind is going to become rested is going into a different state of mind where you can become open to suggestion and just relax relax your eyes and if they're stressed and tense roll them up to your eyebrows with your eyes closed stretch your eyes and release and soften your eyelids soften your eyeballs and simply shut down and shut off your thoughts and follow my voice deep inhale slow exhale And find the part of your body that still feels tense. We're not going to go through every part of your body. I don't do progressive relaxation. We get right into the meditation. But go to the one part of your body that's tense and just release it. You can tighten it, tighten it, and release it. Breathe into it. Breathe some soothing, soft energy into it. See a nice, fluffy pink cloud all around that part of your body and all around you. And another, and another fluffy white cloud all around you. And now we're going to picture that quiet place where you can go to in your mind. Maybe a place that you used to go to with your loved one who passed. Wherever your loved one might be. A moment in time that you both shared. A vacation or a beautiful day that you both shared that was very special. And just visualize that place and see yourself sitting there completely and totally relaxing. See the beauty of the environment. Draw from the energy of the environment. Draw from what's beautiful and serene about it. And just see yourself in this environment and experience the elements that are surrounding you. Because you're going to need to go here now to escape your reality from time to time when it just becomes too intense. 
you're going to close your eyes and you're going to go to this safe space where you can find serenity. And when you become really good at this, when you come here, you're going to invite your loved one who has passed, who has crossed over into the next stage of where the spirit goes when it's no longer in the body. We're not going to exactly do that now. We're going to focus in on you and what you need to do to get peace and serenity and move outside of grief and shame and blame and emotional turmoil. And because you don't have the support of friends and family, we're going to ask the universe and the special, unique guides and archangels who are responsible for helping human beings on earth as they recover and go through the grief healing process. Sometimes it's a wonderful gift when a person is no longer available or you don't have the help of the person who plays an important role in your life if they don't support you the way you need to be supported because then you get to go to the angelic realms and call upon the support of a specific archangel or guide and right now the first two helping spirits or more than two who you are going to call upon as your own spirit guides and become very acquainted with them and they can step forward at this time. This is now going to be your team of people, of spirits that may not be in the body that are here to help you as you go through this difficult time and this difficult transition. They're going to help you ease your suffering. And the next level are the Archangels. Archangel Azrael, who specifically is the Archangel to help people as they go through the grieving process from the loss of a loved one, whether that be through death or the end of a relationship. So call, just accept the support and the help of Archangel Azriel. And when you are in your waking mind, you can look up Archangel Azriel and read more about this Archangel. Feel the presence of the Archangel around you now. Feel how comforting that presence is. What a soft presence this Archangel, what a gentle, soft presence this Archangel has. This Archangel is sometimes depicted as the weeping angel and this angel's wings will just absolutely envelop you in the warmest most comforting most beautifully soft colored light and just gently just begin to soothe and soften the pain that you may be holding in your body in your heart in your solar plexus Allow this Archangel to support you through this extremely difficult transition where you may feel abandoned, unsupported, and left in the cold by those around you who could or should be helping you, but they are not. Feel the Archangel making up that support tenfold. And just relax and let go and surrender into the abundant healing powers and energy of this beautiful angel. And Archangel Azrael is going to welcome in the support of other archangels who you're going to need right now and who want to step forward and help you. Archangel Michael is responsible for easing fear and stress and overwhelming emotions inflicted upon you by other people 
whose social behavior and emotional behavior is reckless and hurtful. An archangel, Michael, can come in and protect you. Can come in and help you move from a state of fear to a state of self-love at this time. Loving yourself. You love yourself by taking care of yourself. By going to a space where you can grieve. By creating a container for yourself. For your own grief. Whether that be in your bed, or in your room, or out in nature. Creating a space and time to grieve and allowing Archangel Michael to comfort you and make you feel safe. Whenever you don't feel safe, whenever you feel attacked at this time, whenever you feel abandoned, completely unsupported, and fearful that you might not be able to go on, that you might not be able to do the basic things that you need to do to get through the day, call upon Archangel Michael to help bring you the strength to get through the day. You getting through the day is very important. Taking care of your responsibilities, your role is important. And if you have obligations that you need to get done and you're really struggling because your grief is so heavy and there's no one there to help lift it for you, call upon Archangel Michael to help you. He will be more than happy and able to. And he comes very quickly and very close and he's very strong and very secure. Just feel Archangel Michael's guiding presence, his strength and his power and his protectiveness. And just accept him into your life right now. And Archangel Raphael, the healing angel, who wants to heal your grief and pain. Ask for Archangel Raphael to infuse you with his beautiful green light. If you're experiencing physical symptoms due to stress, headaches, body aches, chest pains, dizziness, slow processing, the inability to remember easy things, Ask Archangel Raphael to help heal your body and mind at this time that may be so stressful it could be causing you to experience physical ailments. And Archangel Gabriel is another Archangel. Archangel Gabriel is responsible for the go, for the spirits who come to the earth to come into the body to be born and also for the spirits who ascend. He is the manager and the supervisor of all this. And he also helps with journaling and moving through difficult processes. And if you have no one to vent to in the early stages of your grief, while you are looking for grief counseling and support, you can journal and Archangel Gabriel will help you move through this with pen and paper. Archangel Sandalophon, I find, can be an amazingly comforting angel. This angel can bring you so much peace, so much serenity. There's Archangel Jophiel who can bring inner beauty and self-love. And there are so many more Archangels Perhaps there's another archangel who's there for you that I'm not aware of, a one that you gravitate towards, a one that would like to make his or her presence known to you through signs. And always remain open that another relative who has passed, or this specific person who has passed, may also try to connect with you to help you through this difficult time. And also be open to the possibility, the hopeful possibility, that the universe very well might send someone, a human being, who understands about grief, who not may not be in your life right now, 
but a helpful person that may come into your life to help cheer you, to support you, to help guide you, to help take your mind off of things or someone to you for you to simply vent to. A new person that you might meet in grief support or that just might appear synchronistically when you might need them the most. And find within yourself the strength and the power to confront the people who may be causing you even more distress when you're going through such a stressful time grieving and trying to move through the stages of grief on your own. It can be an incredibly heavy cross to bear just to get through each day. And may the universe protect you and create opportunities in your life for you to remove yourself from the, these people who are hurtful. And may the universe push them aside for now so that you can grieve in peace. And in this moment, feel serenity. And in this moment, feel neutrality. And in this moment, feel an escape from the suffering and the very heavy emotional burdens that you're carrying right now. And any time you need peace and serenity, you can turn on my tape, find a comfortable space, create a moment in time just for you. Find your safe space within your mind. Open up to the angelic realms and allow them to support you and you can ask them to walk with you throughout the day. You can ask them to come to work with you. You can ask them to be at home with you. You can ask them to drive with you. They will. You can ask them to help you remember to do the things you need to do and to give you the strength to get them done. And the next thing that is imperative for you to do is to find grief support in a group format and in an individual format and the support that maybe others who depend on you need for you to arrange for them like children or people that are also suffering and may feel disenfranchised with you as well. And deep inhale and deep exhale and you will find the power and the right people who are very helpful will come into your life and they will help you immeasurably and you will have a new support work of friends and maybe some family to confide in, to be safe, to disclose things to, to accept you and support you through your grief. Abundant blessings from the universe for this to happen for you. Deep inhale and deep exhale, I'm gonna let you be in peace if perhaps you've fallen asleep and give yourself permission to lucidly dream about the person who has passed and allow them to visit you while you dream be open to receiving them their comforts as their spirit is also going through a grieving process as well may the archangels and angels bring you a abundant peace and healing and blessings and may you find long moments of peace within each day as you move through your grieving process stay in peace sleep deeply or awake gently